Hey, welcome back to Pole Aesthetic. In this video, I'm going to show you how I billboarded my 3D sprites along an arbitrary axis. You may have seen this from a previous devlog, specifically the Leviathan boss level episode. Leviathan would fire homing missiles at the player. Now those homing missiles are actually 3D sprites and I had to manually write a script to get them to billboard towards the camera as best as possible. I'm going to show you how to do this in script and in shaders. Let's switch over to the screen. Okay, to start I just have this basic scene just so we can orient ourselves. Now here I'm just moving the camera, the cube is stationary, just so we can get an idea of what the effect looks like. So to start, let's add a 3D sprite. Just pull that up here. Gonna drag my missile texture onto it. There we go. And the flags, I'm just gonna set the texture filter to nearest. Camera's pointing this way. I'm gonna leave it this way. It's just one setting for you to be aware of. It's the axis. Now what this does is it tells you which direction the sprite's face is normal to. So in this case, the z-axis. The Z base vector of this object is normal to the sprite face. So it's important you understand this in case you copy the code and you realize that it doesn't work. You can just adjust your code to, to suit the axis that you want to point to the camera. Now by convention, the 3D sprites take the 2D conventions. So Y becomes the vertical up and positive X is the right hand side direction. Now let's attach a script and I'll do this in C sharp first. The first thing we'll need is a reference to the camera, or well, specifically the camera's transform. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to get the camera on every frame update. But in practice, you'll want to cache this reference and then update it with signals if the camera should ever change. Get the global transform. And just for clarity, I'm also going to cache the global transform of the sprite. And I'm just going to list out the basis vectors. You don't have to do this, but again, this is just for clarity. Let's say basis X, basis Y, and basis Z. And so to rotate any object, you manipulate its basis vectors. And so we want to rotate our sprite to face the camera as best as we can. Let's take a look at this. If we look head on, you can see we want the basis Z to point towards the camera. In my case, the Y basis is going to be or well, specifically the negative Y, is going to point in the direction of the missile. So the, the Y basis we want to leave unchanged because we want our sprite to always point in that direction that it's traveling in. And so the question is, how do we deal with this X basis vector? That is, we want to keep it as perpendicular as possible to the other two. So first, let's focus on the basis Z. Our camera, this is the global origin, and it camera's origin is its position in global space. So we have a vector that comes across like this. And if we arbitrarily move this, we have another vector that points to the origin of the sprite. And so if we want this basis vector to point to the camera origin, what we do is we take our camera origin and we subtract the sprite origin. And this gives us a vector that starts here and points to the camera. That's what we want for our basis Z. So if we go back to our script, we can override our bases there. And we take the camera transforms origin. We subtract the sprite transforms origin. We normalize it because we don't want it to scale with distance. We just want that unit length and that's it. And the basis X, we want it to be perpendicular to our two axes. Remember basis Y is unchanged and to get a vector that's perpendicular to two other vectors, you take the cross product. Now recall with cross product, you have a right hand rule. First vector is your thumb, second vector is your fingers. And so the resultant vector is the direction of your palm. So if we wanted to uh, obey this orientation, we take the Y axis first. So we point our thumb in the Y, point our fingers in the Z direction, and our palm points to the right, the X. So we're doing Y cross Z. And that's it. All we need to do then is write to our global transform, a new transform, and the original origin. That's the sprite transform origin. Let's test this. Now you can see that it's facing us, but it doesn't look like anything special is happening. 
The reason for this is we actually do have a built-in in the flags of the sprite is the billboard setting. You can enable it and the sprite will look at us no matter what direction. Enable the Y billboard and this will keep the global Y fixed. But let's say I wanted to rotate the sprite. It's still going to be fixed along the global Y axis. So let's remove this. So we're expecting it to look like this from the camera without the billboarding. If we hit play, you can see that it now does its best to face the camera, no matter which direction we look at it from. Just remember to normalize all your bases. Looks a bit funny there. So I'm going to place it underneath a node that automatically moves. So what I'm going to do here, by convention, 3D objects move along the negative Z, that's the forward direction. So I'm going to align my sprite along the negative Z axis, just like that. I hit play. There we go. That's much more natural. Now as we rotate, it's moving randomly pointing towards its local, its Y basis, but the face of the sprite is always pointed towards the camera. Cool. Now what if we, it's a bit hard to see, so what if we want to scale the sprite up? I'm just gonna add a scale factor of two. In this case, we wanna cache the original scale. I'm gonna introduce a field called the original scale. And I'm going to initialize it in the ready function. I'm going to multiply our new normalized bases by the scale factor of that respective axis. There we go. Same effect and it's scaled properly this time. Nice. Now, if you prefer to work in GDScript, the translation is trivial. It's in fact very concise in GDScript. Just we can introduce our field called the original scale in the ready function, assign it to the sprite's original scale. Then we can get our camera reference. So get viewport, get our 3D camera, and it's global transform, get our sprite transform. And we're just gonna write these directly. So our basis Z is the difference between the two origins normalized and multiplied by the original scale Z. And our basis X, let's pull out the Y transform here. And so our basis X, cross product of the Y and the Z. Normalize it, we multiply it by the original scale. Then we assign it back to the global transform and we create a new transform 3D. Very simple, 16 lines of code as a script. You can test this out. Still works. Now, happy to leave this in a script where you can finish here. However, if you have lots of these bouncing around and your scenes are quite complex, it would be better not to stress the CPU with all these calculations and you're better off uh, writing a shader to handle this sort of thing. Yeah, now the shade is a bit more complicated, but the concept is the same. And I'll show you how to do that. Now with the shader, we're going to use a plane instead of a Sprite 3D. We're going to add a mesh instance. Create a new mesh, a new plane mesh. I'm going to go into the material override property of the geometry instance. Create a new standard material. Click into it. Go into Albedo and drag the missile into here, the texture. I'm going to go into Transparency, and set it to Alpha. Go into Sampling, Filter, Nearest. There we go. My texture is 5 by 13 pixels, so I'm going to scale the mesh 0 0.5, 0 0.3. You can see it's a similar scale to the, to the sprite. So now notice here, 
by default, the face of the plane is along the basis Y. So here, we make it face Z, we'll have a similar setup to our sprite. Now, let's go back to our material, click on the arrow, and we're going to convert it to a shader material so we can write our custom script. Click into it and click into the shader. Now, this will auto generate a whole bunch of uh, parameters and logic calculating the pixels. We're not going to be working in the fragment, but just for clarity, I'm going to delete a bunch of stuff we don't need. So we're only using the texture, we're not using any of the color channels. So I'm going to delete this out of the alpha. I'm going to delete specular and roughness and metallic. And for the albedo, I'm also deleting the color. We're just using the texture for the albedo and the alpha. I'm going to approach this the exact same way. Just the final step is going to be a bit different. So let's get references to the origins. So our cam origin. I'm going to get that from the inverse view matrix. That will be the fourth column, which is at index three. And we just want the X, Y, and Z components. Same thing for the sprite origin. We get that from the model matrix. And here, we can calculate our new Z basis. So basis Z, again, we're going to normalize the result. So I'll write that first. I'll take our camera origin, subtract it from the sprite origin. Next thing we do, calculate the X basis. Again, we want a, a basis Y. So let's split this out, get it from the model matrix. That's the second column, which is index one. It's so our basis X. Again, we need to normalize this. We'll take the cross product of the Y basis and the Z basis. Okay, now let's create a new matrix for writing. So new matrix and we'll initialize it to our original model matrix. Now we update the X column, just the X, Y, and Z components with our new basis X. Similarly, we update the Z column which is at index two. Again, just the X, Y, and Z components. Now this is where it gets a bit different. Our model view matrix, we take our camera matrix, which is the view matrix, and we multiply it by our new matrix, our new model matrix. Now the nice thing about this is that you can see it work in real time is the shader. Another nice bonus of this, you don't have to worry about scaling. So I can increase the size. It still works just fine. Let's hit play. As you can see, no matter what direction the rocket flies in, it will attempt to face the camera as best it can. Now, of course, the one time this effect fails is if it's looking at you head on. It's unavoidable. It's a 2D object in 3D space. Okay. Thank you for watching. Hope you took something away from that. If you have any questions, comments, and any suggestions, improvements on the code, would be much appreciated. Leave them in that little box down below. Devlogs will be resuming soon. The game is still in progress. I haven't abandoned the channel. Don't worry. I've got plenty more to come. I'll see you then.